How many leak code questions does it take to get into Fang? How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? If you're asking this question, you may be setting yourself up for failure. In this video, I'll show you the exact number of questions I solved before getting hired and why that might not matter very much. I'll also share some study tips and some other helpful resources. If you're learning to code or you're in the interview grind right now, leave a comment below and let me know where you're at in the process. A little bit about me, I'm a self-taught software engineer, I did not go to college or university for computer science, and I did not attend a coding bootcamp. Check out this video if you're interested in how I learned. So LeetCode, what is it? For those watching who might not know, LeetCode is a coding problem platform with the main goal of practicing data structures and algorithms. It's commonly used to study for software engineering interviews. It supports tons of languages and hosts a huge range of problems from trees to graphs to dynamic programming and everything in between. Basically, everything you'll need to study for modern software engineer interviews. So what's wrong with numbers? The big reason is if you're solving for numbers sake, you'll likely cut corners and miss out on essential learnings, which are key to success. So if you find yourself playing the number game, make sure to consider these tips instead. Instead of numbers, focus on the type of the problem. Aim to solve diverse problem sets that cover all the types you might encounter. Don't just study array problems in the two-pointer method. If you haven't solved any try problems, do a few of those. If you haven't solved heap problems, make sure to understand how they work. Make sure you're at least familiar with the major question categories to begin in thinking through a solution if you're asked one. Number two, instead of focusing on numbers, focus on the complexity of the problem you're learning. Phone screens are usually easier questions that progress to more difficult if you're fast with the initial question or two. It's fairly common to expect one to two medium difficulty questions in technical interviews. So if you can't solve medium questions in 20 to 30 minutes, that would be a good goal to have. If you do well on the first question and start solving the second but run out of time, that's not necessarily a strike against you. From my experience, leak code hard is not really necessary. And if you can solve them, that's amazing. But your time would be better spent on easy and then progressing to medium as soon as you're ready. Number three, instead of focusing on numbers, focus on the frequency of the problem you're learning. Some types of problems are more common than others. Use this to guide your studying time proportionately. Study the problems that fit the company. All companies have their own interviewing culture. Google, Amazon, Meta are all different. For example, when I was interviewing at Meta, they specifically told me multiple times that they don't ask dynamic programming questions. So I intentionally did not study any DP problems while preparing for Meta's interview. My onsite was canceled during the hiring freeze. On the other hand, I've heard that Google really likes to ask dynamic programming, but when I did a screen for Google last year, they asked a fairly challenging graph question instead. Number four, instead of focusing on numbers, focus on the underlying principle of the problem you're studying. This leads to the most important point. Instead of a set number of problems, focus on the principle underneath each problem. This is absolutely essential. For example, you might be able to solve a problem like two sum with a brute force approach, but the principle is to learn how to do it with a hash to increase the speed. Focusing on the underlying principle can take a few minutes for one type of question and it could take a few hours for another. Don't be discouraged if studying directed acyclic graphs takes longer for you to grok than binary search. What I've found effective is I try an easy problem in a new category and if that goes well I build up to medium. But if I have trouble understanding the question or I'm really struggling to think up a solution I'll read a section of a book on it, maybe I'll even watch a video or a lecture on it and then I'll go back to the problem and try to apply what I've learned to the data structure again. Reading textbook sections can be very helpful because they're very thorough, but watching university lecture courses are also really helpful as well. To summarize, it's not about the exact questions you solve. It's not about the number of problems you solve. Every company's expectations are slightly different. Ultimately, it's about learning the general problem solving techniques for the given data structure and being able to apply it in different scenarios. So how many questions was it for me? How many did I solve before I was hired at Fang? Here it is, 60 easy, 55 medium, and two hard, which gives me just over 100 at 117. And these are the categories I solved problems in. Some bonus resources I found helpful include Grokking Algorithms, Gail's Cracking the Coding Interview and her videos, Harvard and MIT Lectures, these books on algorithms, and of course, NeatCode and NeatCode.io. A good question. Let's find out. One, two, three, three. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a smart owl. I hope these tips are helpful. Do you have any other questions about Lead Code or the interview process? As always, I share a bunch of helpful links in the description, and thanks for watching.